So if you're interested in the Mac Mini M1 and Final Cut Pro, stick around for this whole video because I'm gonna be talking about the issues that I've been having with Final Cut Pro using the Mac Mini M1. So let's get into it. How's it going y'all? It is Ben Aqua. Thank you for joining me in this experience. I made a video recently about the Mac Mini M1 after two weeks, just talking about the pros and the cons. And there's a lot of people sounding off in the comments about certain issues that I've been having with Final Cut Pro and Bluetooth and what could be causing those issues. A lot of people were talking about RAM. I'm also gonna preface this video by saying that I am not a software engineer. I am not a scientist. So yeah, I'm not the Albert Einstein of the M1 chip. So with that out of the way, let's talk about Final Cut Pro and the biggest issues that I've been having with the Mac Mini M1. The issue that I'm having does not have anything to do with render times. Render times on the Mac Mini M1 using Final Cut Pro are ridiculous. They are the fastest render times that I have witnessed on any Mac that I've ever owned. I'm talking about a 10 minute video rendering out in like six minutes or less, which is pretty amazing. So there's no problems with render times. You know, it boots up nice and fast. Everything is zippy. I am using a couple Bluetooth devices, the Magic Trackpad 2 and the Logitech K380 keyboard. I do have some stuttering and random issues with Bluetooth with these two devices, but for the most part, they actually work pretty well. The bigger issues are with Final Cut Pro. And this is specifically with Final Cut Pro 10.5.1, which is the latest version in Big Sur 11.1. There was a previous version, which I guess was just 10.5. On the M1 Mac Mini, I was able to edit a few videos on that, no problem. So I'm pretty sure 90 something percent sure that this is a software issue with Final Cut Pro. Here's the actual issue in Final Cut Pro. So I'll be editing a video, I'll be layering stuff on top of each other or not even layering stuff or I'm just moving you know clips around and everything seems fine and dandy, scrolling around, it's nice and smooth. So yeah there's these audio dropout issues that drive me freaking bonkers just by you know just doing normal editing stuff in Final Cut Pro. The other Mac that I kind of reverted to using because these issues got so annoying is my 2019 MacBook Pro, which is the Intel processor, base model eight gigabyte MacBook Pro, which still works really well. It's not as smooth as the Mac Mini M1, of course, but it still works really well. And I don't notice these audio stuttering, these audio jitter, I don't know what you wanna call it, the audio dropout issues on that MacBook Pro, doing the same kind of editing, even layering, you know, four videos on top of each other with all of these clips being 4K. There's a little bit of slowdown sometimes on the 2019 MacBook Pro, but for the most part, it actually does a really good job and it's very smooth when editing in the same way that I've been editing on my Mac Mini M1. So that's what leads me to this very non-scientific hypothesis that it's not necessarily the eight gigabytes of RAM on my Mac Mini that's causing the issue. Because like I said, I'm doing the same type of edits using my 2019 MacBook Pro and I'm not seeing the same type of audio dropout issues and complete shutdowns. I forgot to mention the shutdowns. That's another thing that's been happening is freezing and just complete shutdowns of my computer. When I'm using the Mac Mini M1 and Final Cut Pro editing, all of a sudden I'll hear a bzzz kind of noise. I can still move the cursor around, but the bzzz noise happens and the computer just basically freezes for like 10 to 15 seconds. It even got so bad where I had to restart the entire computer using a force restart where you, you, know, you hold down the power button on the Mac Mini M1. I had to do that a few times and that pains me to even do that. So part of me died inside when I did that every time. And it got so bad that I was just like, screw this. I'm just gonna use my 2019 MacBook Pro to edit my videos because these issues using the M1 Mac Mini got super, super annoying. And a lot of y'all in the comments were saying that it's because I have the eight gigabytes of RAM and I should have upgraded to the 16 gigabytes. What the hell were you thinking, Ben? And I think there is some truth to that. Obviously, the more RAM you have, the more your computer is kind of future-proofed and it'll handle stuff like stacking several 4K videos on top of each other in Final Cut Pro, in theory, better. However, I don't think it's just about the eight gigabytes of RAM. I'm pretty sure it's not because my MacBook Pro from 2019 also has eight gigabytes of RAM. It's not the upgraded version. So why is it not happening to that one? And it's happening on the M1 Mac. And then I got this really interesting comment from Strict Nonconformist. Shout out to you for this. They say, as a software developer with decades of experience, the Final Cut Pro issues along with 
other reported issues sound like weird memory corruption issues via hardware and or software. The Bluetooth stack sounds like it's defective and has weird noises as a result makes me strongly suspect there's a connection there. I've not investigated to see how much of the Bluetooth driver stack is in the kernel space, but anything in kernel space must be perfect for memory handling or it can overwrite or read data from everywhere in the system, be it kernel space or user application memory space, resulting in unreliable behavior. Especially the first half of this talking about weird memory corruption issues via the hardware or the software, I pretty much was like, wait a minute, there has to be something up with that. I need to figure this out. So I opened up the activity monitor while editing and I noticed that there was this thing called VT Decoder XPC service, which is something that's happening in the RAM and in my CPU usage that is skyrocketing. I mean, producing like astronomically more RAM and CPU usage than Final Cut Pro itself. So I was like, what is this VT Decoder XPC service? What is this thing? Cause it's doing me a disservice in Final Cut Pro. So I opened up my 2019 MacBook Pro. I open up Final Cut Pro on that machine and I'm like, okay, does the same thing happen with this VTPXQ whatever service thing on my MacBook Pro from 2019? And yes, it was still happening on that machine, but it wasn't skyrocketing to like using six gigabytes of my RAM just to edit a little bit of 4K video. It was being throttled down kind of normally and properly. So I looked up this, I already forgot what it is, VT Decoder XPC service. I was like, what is this? And basically it's an internal process that happens in Mac OS where it's basically live decoding video and other things in iMessage, you know, like animated stuff in iMessage, that kind of thing. It's taking your media and live decoding it for you. So I'm like, whatever this freaking service thing is, it is completely messing up the Mac Mini M1. And I think that is what is behind these Final Cut Pro issues. This version of Final Cut Pro just seems like it's not able to throttle this decoding service that's happening. So what that's leading to is my RAM on my computer is getting extremely overloaded and it causes the whole thing to act damn fool. It shuts down, it freezes the computer, it causes the audio to do that bzzz noise and you know, everything just goes completely haywire. And I'm guessing this is something that Apple will see and maybe they already know about it and they're gonna issue a fix for it. But I really hope it happens very soon because like I said in my previous video, Final Cut Pro is like like 80% of why I even got the Mac Mini M1 in the first place. And if I'm using my old machine to edit videos, why am I even still using the Mac Mini M1? Maybe I should just return it. So if you're experiencing these issues, please let me know in the comments. And maybe if you found a fix for it, potentially, you can also let me know down there. I think that'll help me out. I think it'll help the entire Aquafam community out there. I'm also considering trading in the eight gigabyte Mac mini M1 for a 16 gigabyte version, just to see if it is a RAM issue. But honestly, it does seem like the issue is being caused by that particular video encoding service, the VT whatever. <laughs> I can't remember what that's called, but it really does seem like that particular issue is just a throttling issue with that particular service. So anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you have any other observations about the M1 Mac family, let me know in the comments. I'd love to see y'all down there. Smash the like button, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And now it's time to throw this video into my 2019 MacBook Pro so I don't throw my Mac Mini M1 out of the window in the editing process. Have a nice day. Bye.